In section 4.1, we learned the importance of correlation and how correlation can help us measure the strength of a linear relationship. Also remember that we are only interested in this particular course in linear relations. We're not interested in the other relations, even though they exist and they're valid and everything. That's just not what our focus is. Also remember that a strong correlation coefficient does not mean causation, right? Because there are all those lurking variables out there. Okay, so if you look here at these two, right here, these prob this problem from earlier in 4.1, you can see that we had strong correlation. We had a strong positive correlation over here on the right, or on the left, excuse me, and a strong negative correlation over here on the right. But we want to go one step further from that. We can see that there's a linear trend. I mean, we said we're only interested in linear relationships, relationships that look like these two shapes. So if we're only interested in linear relationships, that means that there's a line in there, one line that would be the best line. It's called the line of best fit or the linear regression line. Basically that the points regress to this mean, this line in the middle. And we want to be able to find the equation for it. And that's what we're going to do in 4.2. So let's look here. So we have the equation of the regression line. It's called the least squares regression line, the line of best fit, the linear regression line. It's called a lot of different things for our purposes. And it's y hat is equal to ax plus b. Now it gets a little hat on its head because it's not really exactly what y is. y is whatever the dots are. So y hat is your model. It's your average, if you will. Right? So it's the average trend that you see. Then you have a slope. Right, because we all learn in algebra class that y equals ax plus b, the thing that's multiplied by the x is called the slope. In algebra class, they call it mx plus b, but here we want to call it a. Again, that's setting you up for some other stuff in later statistics courses if you took them. All right, so the interpre interpretation of the positive or negative slope would be that on average, if x increases by 1, then the y is expected to increase or decrease by a. Now there's a lot going on there. x is in quotes and y is in quotes, and that's because you don't really say x. You say whatever the variable was in English, right? So if, if it was free reduced lunch, you'd say the percent on free reduced lunch, or if it's degrees Fahrenheit, you say degrees Fahrenheit, you say whatever it is. If it increases by 1, then we expect, doesn't mean that it's going to happen, but we expect the y variable to increase or decrease by a. Now everything in here is on average. It means it's about this. If it increases by 1, it's going to go up by about a. Not exactly a, but more or less. So in other words, we're trying to be kind of squishy with that language in there. And then for the y-intercept, then when x is 0, and again, x is in quotes because you're not really going to say x. You're going to say whatever it was in variable. The y is about, I should say, b because it's not exactly b, it's about b, or is expected to be expected to be about b. All right, so some important notes about this. One, we will never, never, never find this equation by hand in this course. It's, it's a difficult calculation, and it's basically outside the scope of what we want to handle here. We're going to use linear regression from the TI-84 calculator, the same linear regression that we already used to find the correlation coefficient. Second important note is that often the y-intercept doesn't actually make sense of the context of the situation. If that occurs when doing the problems, explain why it doesn't make sense in order to receive credit for it. So if it makes no sense, talk about it. Why doesn't it make any sense? Okay, so um, yeah. Another important note is that we don't want to use the regression model to make predictions that are outside the scope of the model. That is, to make predictions for values of the explanatory variable that are much larger or much smaller than those observed in our data set. So if you look back here, this was the life expectancy data. You don't want to talk about, you know, what would happen with a country with 9.5 births per woman because you don't have data that's anywhere remotely close to that. Similarly, you don't want to talk about one birth per woman because, again, you don't really have anything super close to that. You want to stick closer to the range of data that you actually have. That's what this warning is saying. Because, of course, if you go too far out, if you're talking about 12 or something, one, that's silly. No country has 12 births per woman. But two, it could start giving you crazy values for your Y variable, which don't make any sense. 
So here is the fertility rate and births per woman and the life expectancy that we discussed in 4.1. And you can see I added in the equation of the regression line right there. So y equals negative 5.0303x plus 82.528. I can't put the hat on it um, because it's impossible for me, but there is a little hat up there above the y variable. Oh, there, I managed to get a little hat in there because technically it's it's a model, it's a an average of the, all those points. So this line is sort of like the average of all the points put together into a trend. And we're going to use that line to make predictions. So suppose that a, in 1962, a country had a fertility rate of 4.207 births per woman. Using the linear regression equation given on the graph, what would be that country's life, or what would you expect that country's life expectancy rate to be? Okay, so what we want to do is we want to substitute. We want to put the value of 4.207 in for x and then figure out what the y hat would be. And that would be about a 61.366. And I would get that just by using the calculator. So negative, that's this little guy right down here, negative, not the subtraction sign, that's different. So 5.0303 times 4.207 plus 82.528. See, 61.366, just like I said. And of course, you want to give it units. And I put in a squiggly equals because it's about that much. We don't really expect it to be that. We expect it to be around there. All right, now Gabon, which is a country in Africa, had a birth rate of 4.207 children per woman and a life expectancy of only 40.387 years in 1962. So we're going to compute, draw, and label the residual. Right now, residual is your error, right? It's it's a it's a little bit more formalized than that. It's kind of a directional error. It's always your observed y minus your predicted y hat. So, we observed forty point three eight seven in real life, but we had so observed y minus the predicted. I'm just going to fill this in here. Y hat. There it is. Okay, so we take 40.387 and we subtract away 61.366 and you get negative 20.979. Now I want to go back here and I want to label that on this graph. So remember that Gabon had 4.207 children per woman. So let me go here to 4. Point, okay, so here's 4.5. 4.207, this country right here, this is Gabon. And let me, I'm going to label it and change its color so you can see it real quickly and easily. So I'll be right back with the labeling. All right, in order to make my life sane, I, I put the um, Y hat up here. Oh, and i got to move my hat. Hold on one second. There we go. I got the hat to move too. Okay, so over here we have Gabon down here at this dot. And then the residual is this distance. And notice it's negative because Gabon was far below what we expected it to be. Okay. And that leads us to our important points about residuals. So when the real life observed value is below um, or lower than, I guess I should say lower than to work with there, lower than we predicted from the model or below what we predicted from the model. When that happens, then we overestimated, right? So we estimate the red one, the predicted one, but it was actually at the observed value far below it. So we overestimate it. Again, the estimate is the line itself. So you're guessing it'll be the line and it was below that. Similarly, you can overestimate, or excuse me, underestimate. That's this one right here. If you think it's going to be down here at this blue value, and it's actually way above it at the pink value, then you underestimated. It was higher than what you thought it would be. All right, and then that distance in between what you thought it would be and what it actually was, right? What you think it would be is on the line, that's your prediction, and what it actually is is down here at the dot, or vice versa, what it actually is is up here, and what you think it's going to be is down there. That distance in between, that vertical distance, that's your residual. That's this error that you're finding right here. All right, now what about the United States. The United States had a life expectancy oops, of 70.21. Calculate the fertility rate. 
So notice we're going a little bit backwards here. Life expectancy, oops, and that should say expectancy, expectancy of 70.21 years. So they're telling us that Y is 70.21, and they're asking us for X, right? So how are we going to solve that? Well, we have the equation. We're saying, okay, we'll use our equation right here. We'll say that, okay, it's negative 0.43 x, okay? And then we say that this is equal to 70 point, oh, rats, what was it? 70.21. Okay, well, subtract, you want to solve this for x, right? So we want to subtract 82.528 from both sides. You want to do it over on the left and the right. That way they'll cancel. Okay. And you're doing that so that way, oopsie, I messed that up. There we go. You're doing it so that these two will go away, right? So you'll have 82.528 and minus 82.528 will go away. It'll leave you whatever this number is over here. So let me grab the calculator. 70.21, take away 80.528, gets me negative 10.318. So I have negative 10.318 equals negative 5.0303x. Then I'm going to divide both sides by negative 5.0303. And of course, I do it to the left. I have to do it to the right. And you do it over here so that way these disappear because 5.03 divided by 5.03 goes away to 1. So we need to take 10.318 and divide it by 5.0303. So if you just press divide, it'll actually take the last answer, which was that number, negative 10.318. Or you could type it. Oops, and I want negative, so let me grab the negative down here. That's this little symbol, 5.0303. Careful not to use the minus sign when you mean negative. They're two different things. And we get 2.0511. So we get x is, and now this is all squiggly because we don't really think it's this. We think it's about this, right? So what was that, 2.0511? 051. And there you have your answer. And that would be children per woman, right? Children per woman. You always want to have units for something like this. If this is a real life problem, it has data units. In this case, it was children per woman because you're going to find your X, right? The fertility rate. So we took the life expectancy, which was Y, plugged it in for Y, and then used algebra to solve for X. In fact, I'm going to put this right here. Okay, so that's what we were doing. Oops. And then we solve for it. All right, so we've had a little bit of algebra, solving for a variable X and everything. That's great. And we learned how to find residuals and what they imply for the graph. Notice, by the way, real quickly, um, since we have the time, a least squares regression line, I didn't really get into it too much, but what it is is it's a line that, that makes it so the residuals are the smallest they can be. Every dot has a residual. Every single point, all the ones below have negative residuals. All the ones above have positive residuals. And they all balance out perfectly so that there's, um, if you add it up negatives plus the positives, you get zero. That's what the regression line is. The regression line is the line that balances all those residuals. It's the one line that makes it so that all the negative residuals and positive residuals are as small as they can be and that they'll add up to zero if you added them all up. That's what call it, makes it the special best line. So the best line is the one that'll have the smallest error, the smallest residuals. All right, we're done with that. In the next video, I'm going to show you how to find the regression line if Excel doesn't give it to you. So I'll see you back here for that.